Hello and welcome back to the Start a Glamping Business podcast. We've got a marketing special for you today because we're joined by Nate Veets, who is the founder of The, Co- the Content House. Um, they are a content and social media agency that specialise in short-term rentals and unique outdoor hospitality projects. Uh, Nate, we're going to be working with you closely, we hope, uh, in the next few months over some on some really exciting projects, which I'm sure the audience will hear about more uh, in the future. I've given you the sort of, I've given the broad introduction to you there. I'd love for you to tell us uh, a little bit more about yourself and your day job and what you do. Yeah, thank you so much, Nick, and thanks for having me on, man. Um, yeah, so pretty much uh, my name is Nate, and I am the owner and founder of Content House. So as Nick said, uh, we specialize in short-form content for specifically Instagram, TikTok. Um, so all those like little short-form reels that you see, that's kind of what we specialize in, and then we, we do specifically a lot of work in the uh, str and vacation rental industry so you know my day-to-day is pretty much looking like um you know a normal founder just running around trying to put out fires trying to prevent them um you know trying to grow the company trying to uh, establish our culture inside the company and um you know in that in that in that way we we then start impacting kind of our clients and you know trying to grow the business so it's kind of like the day-to-day man and like uh, my job title, I guess you could say, is really just trying to wear all the hats. I, I was going to say, I, the way I put it usually is you're wearing a million hats and, and that's exactly what it's like. Um, so tell us about your, your background and how you got into this business. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, starting out, um, you know, I was I was actually a line cook and a chef for very many years. Um, so I actually was in that industry for about seven to ten years. Um, started off uh, very early on when, when I was in high school. Um, just in a dish tank and then I slowly moved my way up the line as a cook and as a chef um, and then in 2019 2020 I started my first business as an entrepreneur uh, I started plus ultra which was a, a meal prep company um, and we did that for a couple years that did really well and then of course COVID hit um, and as everybody knows COVID was kind of a, a crap show for everybody especially um, hospitality and restaurants um, so we actually survived through 2020 with that through all the lockdowns and all that stuff um, and you know, we, at the end of that, um, our partnering restaurant shut down and, um, I kind of had the, um, kind of opportunity to look into, you know, my career and what I wanted. Um, and I realized, you know, like cooking and the food, I was naturally good at it and it was really fun for me, but it wasn't what, um, I thought I was called to do, or I didn't feel like it was something that I'm like, man, I want to do this for the next 10 years. I want to build this out. Um, so I kind of started looking at, you know, what, what are other things that I've always wanted to do? Um, and media was always one of those things. It was something that, um, I always did in high school. I was always freelancing. Um, I never f- felt like I found my my niche or my purpose within media because, um, you know, when, when, it, when it comes to stuff that I like to do, I like to take things like very relational and I don't like the transactional, you know, um, jobs that a lot of, you know, freelancers take like, uh, you know, like, you know, and it's just kind of like the, the cliche, like, uh, weddings and senior photos and all that stuff like that's that's usually where people go to to make money in media and I never never thought that was a fit for me so um, when the meal prep company shut down I just started you know into just the 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 process of trying to find you know something within media that I would enjoy and that would make sense for me Um, and you know I started working with a lot of uh, real estate brokers real estate agents um, and, and soon enough, like I, I specifically remember there was a week where I just kept on getting requests like, hey, I want to do a reel or I want to do something for social or TikTok or what do you know about social? Um, and at the time, I was actually building out my own personal brand, too. Um, and I was doing like affiliate like marketing. Uh, I was doing, you know, brand sponsorships, all that stuff for myself. So I started really enjoying social and I kind of realized, um, you know, two or three months into trying the freelance stuff that. You know, there's a huge gap um, just really in the world with business where um, people really understand and are starting to appreciate the, the, the um, you know, the upside of social and investing into it. But not a lot of people know how to execute on that. And there's not a lot of solutions and resources. Um, so I, I kind of realized like there's a huge gap in the market. I'm going to create a business model that specifically revolves around media uh, social media based media work. Um, and I'm going to make it very affordable for us to be able to take over and, you know, strategize and facilitate social media strategies, but also execute on, on ex, but also execute on them from a media standpoint. So, you know, started doing that. Um, at the time I actually had a business partner when we first started the business and he had a really awesome foot in the door for Airbnbs. Um, so we started working with some of his, you know, uh, past clients that he had worked with, got got into that the str space and kind of just blew up from there and you know just kept on rolling with that 
um, and it's been, you know, a blur ever since. Yeah, and you're now wearing a million hats for for the content house, and you've got some great clients. So we're going to talk a little bit about these later on. But you've worked with with people like uh, Live Oak Lake and and Dunlap Palo, yep. um, and and there's some great case studies that there will be some links in the description to look at those uh, at those sites um, if anyone wants to. Um, but but when you work with these clients let's say you've got a client live oak lake for example i think that's got 11 sort of outdoor cabins yep. um how do you typically work with a client like that in terms of you know how often do you go on site and shoot uh, what kind of social media content do you produce for them and how does it generally work yeah so the way the way we go out and shoot is a little bit weird um normally when you go out as like say we have like a say as a media person right normally we go out with a scope of work we want you know, three videos that look like this or, you know, that are this long that showcase this or tell this kind of story. Um, when we go out, it's with the intention of bulk shooting for social media so that we can, you know, one, not have to go out there as often because it's expensive for us and our client, but it gives us the ability to go out there and bulk shoot so that we can really implement strategies down the line, like in four to six months. So when we go out, we're, we're going out for out of state clients that we work with. It's anywhere from like two to three times a year. And when we're out there, we'll be out there for you know anywhere from two to four days shooting nonstop bulk shooting for those clients. Yeah. And that's part of what makes it so affordable, right? You know, I suppose traditional content agencies, you know, when, you know, maybe restricted by drug fee or whatever, that they might have to go out once a month or, or, or something like that. But you can, you, you're across these three or four days, you get a whole load of content and then you've got what, three, four, five, six months to repurpose it. And, and it doesn't get, it doesn't go, it still gets really, it's still really effective. These uh, really unique sites still go viral. Um, and I suppose that that's part of what makes you be able to give such a, a sort of affordable package. So I think is it is it about around three thousand dollars a month you charge for for that package? Yep, yep. Our retainers are anywhere from like three to thirty five hundred, um, mm -hmm. and that's for you know that's for everything. Um, that's for all the strategy and consultancy, the shooting, um, and then the editing and deployment and management of the platform. And that's something too where it makes it very affordable and it makes it logistically very sound for us to do it like that because we have control pretty much of the the whole the whole loop of that social strategy, right? Like we don't have to come out as media people, consult with you, get, you know, get you to tell us exactly what we need to do and then deliver that to somebody who, you know, is going to post it like, and then get feedback from that and get like revisions and all that stuff. Like we don't really do revisions because the only feedback loop comes from our team. Mm -hmm. So our team's on that front end telling us like, Hey, this is what's working. This is what's not working. The next time you go out and shoot, just don't do this, do all of that. Um, and it gives that feedback loop really, um, scopes down what we capture and it really makes it very specific so when we're out there for the second third fourth fifth time um, shooting we can focus in on exactly what we know what works and it really is super streamlined for us and like you said it's pretty affordable and cheap for the uh, for our clients too yeah uh, and and your whole world is obviously social media uh, everyone knows that you know this this podcast obviously focused on glamping but uh, you know it's similar for, for other kind of unique short-term rental businesses as well everyone knows that that social media is massively important for, for glamping businesses and it's something that you know everyone does and everyone knows they need to do uh, but why do you think social media is particularly important for these kind of unique hospitality glamping outdoor experience whatever term you want to use why, why do you think yeah. it's so important um, for that kind of business yeah. Um, so it's really cool because you look at, you know, and it's really a good thing that it's so important because it means that more people are seeing that there's a an independence of like business model with these STRs because, you know, the, the, the STR industry really blew up after, you know, during and after COVID. Um, and what happened was a bunch of people obviously saw it as an opportunity. And a lot of people, their only route to that was through, S, you know, STR services like Airbnb, Verbo, those kind of platforms. Um, and as it's evolving and developing as an industry, you're seeing people get more independent. So they're having their own like direct booking, you know, they're hosting their own bookings. They're um, going independent with all their marketing. They're building their own brands. So I think when it comes down to it, like, and it's really for any brand or business, like social media is one of the only places you can go that's you have the ability to reach possibly millions of people very organically, very word of mouth like. Um, and you can do that through like just really good strategy and content and consistency. So it's, I think it's really important for especially like any business, but especially SCRs, because if you're building out a brand and you really want to grow that and you want to grow that direct booking, um, you know, those clients and that even retention of clients, um, having 
really good social strategy is going to, one, it's going to get people into your platform. It's going to get people to engage with you, but it's two, going to get people to come back and re-engage or rebook with you. So I think it's like the, a huge factor in, you know, if you want to go more independent away from Airbnb, Verbo, I think it's a necessity at this point. Yeah. And you, you know, obviously there's a whole range of social channels. There's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all the rest. You have a particular focus on Instagram, right? Uh, and, and and you you focus on it. Yeah, it is your main focus for some clients. You only do Instagram marketing. So what, why is why the focus on Instagram and why is it so effective for these kind of businesses? Yeah, I like to explain it to people like, um, it's kind of like the uh, the in between of Facebook and, and TikTok. So Facebook, you have a lot of older the older crowd. Um, TikTok, you have on the other side of that you have TikTok, which is like the younger crowd. Um, and you know, Facebook is great. We've seen people have a lot of success on Facebook, um, and then we've seen people have success on TikTok. The difference is TikTok; it's a very young crowd, and it's very hard to convert that into like bookings, especially depending on how high ticket your your stay is. If you're charging five, six, eight, twelve hundred dollars for a stay. Um, very few 18 to 24 year olds or even younger than that are gonna do like go there. So we've seen just the the best engagement and growth from Instagram. We do focus a little bit on TikTok and we've had a good amount of results on TikTok for some of our clients. Um, but Instagram we feel it's like the good medium, right? It's like a good age range, a good dem- demographic on there. The the, the overall platform is like in that really mature phase. It's it's been around for long enough that you have people of all all types of ages and demographics in there, and you know they're more they're more prone to engage with you and and have a like a click through to your website and actually book with you. Um, and the, the Instagram algorithm is also a little bit more predictable than um, you know say TikTok, where it's kind of the wild west. Um, you we kind of know exactly what works for Instagram. Um, and it's just a really mature platform, I think. Yeah, and, and what you mentioned there about clicking through to the website and, and booking, that's the most important thing, obviously. You know, it's great to have what, what are sometimes called vanity, met, vanity metrics where, sure. um, you know, you can maybe get, you can get millions and millions of views or impressions mm-hmm. on, on, a, on a, a TikTok or a tweet or whatever it may be, but it's completely and utterly irrelevant if no one um, pays money to stay at your site or at the very least follows you and, and continues to be engaged in the content. Um, so I think that's one, one thing to stress is you know vanity me- vanity metrics can be important for, for a sign of the, you know you you're create an engaging content uh, but it's not relevant if, if it's not resulting in direct booking so uh, presumably instagram has been the sweet spot for that kind of thing as well right yeah yeah for sure yeah um so going into a bit of a niche uh, on on instagram uh, i know you have a particular focus on instagram reels uh, uh, now I would probably estimate that, you know, 50% of, of the listeners will, will know what Instagram reels are and 50% won't. So first of all, could you explain what an Instagram reel is? Uh, and second of all, why it's so powerful and why you focus so much on it for your clients? Yeah. So pretty much Instagram reels are, um, it's a short form video. Um, usually they're anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds. I believe they can be 90 seconds long now. Um, and they're kind of like TikTok format, like super quick, super fast kind of scrolling through watching them all like back to back. So that's kind of what a reel is. It's kind of hard to explain unless you're like on the platform kind of scrolling through them. Um, but they're super, super impactful and powerful because what when you get the right formula, right, um, you're able to capture and gain trust and a following very quickly with it with a short form video. Um, you know, when you look at other platforms like YouTube, um, it's a lot harder because you're, you're convincing somebody they need to spend five to 10 minutes of their life on a video with reels. All you have to do is capture their attention and give them a reason to kind of trust you to go to your profile. And then you're really able to make really great, just business to customer, or even person to person interaction and, and engagement, um, through, through a short form video. So I think that's the biggest um, like upside of Reels is it, it allows you to get a lot across in a short amount of time, and you're really able to capture capture you're really able to capture attention and uh, you know show value very quickly to your audience. Yeah, and so I add a bit of color to that discussion. Um, you have a certain style that, that say, for example, let, let's talk Live Oak Lake, which again the mm-hmm. link to Live Oak Lake will be in in, in the description of this episode. Um, you've got a pretty uh, consistent style when it comes to, to marketing that business and so give us an example of, of a typical reel that you would create for that kind of business 
Yeah, so for Live Oak, like the first thing we do with, with clients is we go in and we ask certain questions or we try to puzzle piece certain stuff together. So, you know, a few of those are, you know, what's the brand voice that we need to get across? So like some some places we'll use like really upbeat, like EDM music or even like hip hop music. Other places we want to use like more slow, methodical, like uh, either like more chill music or folk music. So that's the first thing is we're trying to figure out what the brand is. Um, what that what that delivery needs to look like and how it needs to feel, and then after that we're picking through you know that that business or that project or that for example like Live Oak Lake, you know what about that stay and that experiential you know hospitality resort that he's built, uh, Isaac has built. What about that is the unique selling point of that? Like what's going to perform really really well? What what what, what would people want to see the most um, for a Live Oak? For example, drone shots of the whole p property are huge because it shows off that experience. Um, highlighting his container pool, that's been a really big one. We try to put a container pool into like every two, two to like every other, we try to put a container pool shot into like every other video pretty much because it performs so well. So, you know, that's kind of like the base level, right? Like what is the brand that we need to adhere to and that we need to develop the voice for? And then what is, um, you know, what are the unique selling points of that that we can highlight the most in, in the videos to get the, the most amount of engagement. And then after that, it's really just picking apart, you know, how those videos need to be cut and formatted, you know, what kind of clips we need to have in there, what kind of call to actions we need to have, what kind of captions, hashtags, you know, all of that stuff. But that's kind of like a, a rough um, breakdown of like our strategy behind, you know, creating those reels. Yeah, and that, that's the beauty of social media as well is, is, is it's, it allows you to, to test and, and improve. Um, so you've said, you know, you, you look at the numbers, figure out what works and what doesn't. And so I think it's really important to get across just the importance of, of you're not going to get it right first time when, you, when you're trying to social, market your, your business on social media. Sure. Uh, but you can't just keep throwing out content that, out there for and, and not even looking at the metrics. You've got to figure out, okay, what's performed well? Why is this performed well? How can we use that lesson um, to, to affect our content moving forward? And I imagine that's that's the reason why uh, you've been able to grow these these um, these pages is is testing, 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 learning, 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 and, and then implementing. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's really a lot of um, a lot of a lot of experimenting and then patience. You know, it's um, it's one of those things. It's it's such a weird medium because you're you know, you could you could go viral today, or you could go viral in eight months. But if you just keep posting, eventually, if you're being intentional with it, eventually you will get those big numbers. Like if you're being intentional with the strategy, you're developing it, you're trying to get better. Um, you're seeing what doesn't work and what works, and you're changing those things day to day um, with intentionality and patience. Like you will get results from social, but that's where a lot of people go wrong, right? They either go into it with either the wrong intentionality, they just want to sell, 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 or no intentionality, they just want to post just to be relevant. Um, or they go into it, you know, with very, very little patience. We have more, we have a bunch of clients all the time, you know, we'll be one, two, three, three months in and they're like, we see nothing. And it's like, you're not supposed to, <laughs> like, it could take six months, a year. We, we have, we've had clients where 14 months down the line after working with them for a year, year and a half, they finally start the movement like that. We see that, that uptrend of reach. We see that uptrend of followers and, you know, sometimes it takes that long, but if you like, it's worth it, right? Like there's no other place you could go for, for that kind of high quality engagement with the audience. Um, but it really just requires that intentionality and that patience with it. Yeah, and, and when that work starts to pay off, you start seeing numbers that that you know, for example, Live Oak Lake I think has got over a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Yep. Uh, you've got some other clients like Dunlap Hollow and, and Hocking Hills Treehouse Cabins that you've also grown um, to really big social media following. Obviously, that translates to a lot of uh, a lot of direct bookings and high occupancy rates. It's the whole reason why, why you do this. Um, so tell us a little bit about, so, you know, th th those are three businesses. First of all, can you just run through, uh, we we've explained Live Oak Lake, you know, it's, I think it's 11 cabins on, on, on a lake, um, as, as simple as it sounds, but they're really nice high-end cabins. Can you tell us a little bit more about Dunlap Hollow and the treehouse cabins as well, um, just to, to provide a bit of color to those before we, we sort of dig into why we think they've been so successful? Yeah, yeah. So starting with Dunlap, um, Dunlap's awesome. We we took them on when they were at, I believe, 19,000, 20,000 followers, and they're now at, um, I believe, 290,000, so almost three, I believe almost 300,000 followers. Um, the really cool thing about them is they have a really solid brand. 
Um, they have a really and really solid like concepts. So even their A frame is is gorgeous. It's it's probably one of the best A frames that you could stay in, and people copycat it, and people you know look at that as inspiration all the time. Their A frame is just stellar. Um, the, their biggest you know differentiating factor for them is their cave stay though. So uh, about a, a year ago, year and a half, they started developing this um, experiential stay within a cave in in Hawking Hills, Ohio, and nobody around it had really done that. Very few people have ever really done that. So just that really unique stay. Um, you know, our content's great, but really that's that that concept kind of did half the work for us because it's just so crazy um, and it just creates so much FOMO and it's so different um, that it, it's really been responsible for most of their growth. Um, so that's that's Dunlap. They're 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 really awesome. And then the tree houses, they're also on Hawking Hills, so local, kind of local to us. We're out of Dayton, uh, Dayton, Ohio. Um, they they have I believe four really unique tree houses and I think the thing for them is um, just the exteriors and the overall environment of the of the property and of the units um, they're just very magical if that makes sense like it's a very weird, weird it's a very weird word to use to describe like a vacation home but when you roll up to it and you're you know like Hemlock for example is their flagship when you're walking down the stairs. You really feel like you're in like a Lord of the Rings movie or you know a fantasy movie, um, and it's really crazy. And when you can capture it properly, it really creates a lot of buzz and like a lot of like FOMO, because it, it's it's really weird because like the the cabins are really small. They're not like the most luxurious cabins ever. They're nice but not crazy. But the exteriors and the, just the overall experience of rolling up to them very magical. Um, so that's yeah that's that's the tree houses and yeah we've grown both of those to pretty big big numbers. Um, and it's really been from um, just them being so unique um, in their look, if that makes sense. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening. This is just a quick note to say that this podcast is brought to you by Glamper Techs in North America. And what we do is we help you through the process of starting a glamping business, no matter what stage you're at. So if you need to find a property, we'll tell you where the most suitable area is to start your glamping business. If you have a property, we'll look at your local zoning code and tell you how likely you are to get your project off the ground according to the zoning rules and regulations in your local area. We'll also give you a really good roadmap of permits that you'll need Need and regulations that you'll need to be aware of to get your glamping business off the ground. If you need financing, we'll introduce you to our range of financing partners and do you a feasibility study that will give you some really solid financial projections and market analysis that will allow you to acquire the funding that you need. If you need glamping units, we'll talk you through your options and introduce you to one of our trusted manufacturing partners to ensure that you're looked after throughout the whole process. If you need a site design or if you need permits to move forward with your project, we've got architects who will do all your drawings, make all your arguments and essentially allow your dream to become a reality. The list goes on and I don't want to bore you, so I'll let you get back to the episode in a second. All I'd say is that Glamper Techs North America are the people to speak to about starting a glamping business in the US or Canada. So if you're even thinking of starting a glamping business, just get in touch with us at contact at glampertech.com or 646-586-2330. All the details are in the description and no matter what stage of the process you're at, we will be able to help, whether it's doing something ourselves or pointing you in the right direction of our partners. Just let us know that you came from the podcast and we'll see about doing you a little discount along the way. So thanks for listening and I'll let you get back to the episode. Yeah, so I mean, my next question was putting aside all of your marketing work, you know, those are three hugely successful businesses. You, you, you probably have answered the question there by saying they're all unique, but is there any particular factor that you can put down to, to their successes aside from your marketing work? Yeah, yeah. For Dunlap, it's definitely their cave. I mean, we, we see viral reels with their A-frame. You know, we've hit like maybe five to 10 million with their A-frame. But their cave is just such a huge, like, selling point. Um, and it's also a huge deterrent, right? Like, we have a lot of people, and, you know, I talk to the owners all the time about it. We have a lot of people who hate the concept of the cave, you know, like, environmentalist people, like, that kind of stuff. So it's, like, just, like, from both of those polar opposites of, like, people who are, like, holy crap, that's crazy. And the people who are, like, we hate you for it. Just the engagement around it has been insane. I think our biggest reel for them um, – I believe was like around 20 million or something. They got like a million and a half like likes. And that's just like, when you think about the sheer number of that, like that's ridiculous. Like that's so many people. Um, and it's all because of just that polarizing uniqueness. 
Um, and it's really cool to see. Um, so they like, honestly, stuff like that, it kind of does like, again, like we can't take credit for that. Cause it's like, it kind of does have to work for you. It's so unique. Um, and that's really the clients we're looking to work with, right? Like we want to be able to roll up on site and say, our job's going to be easy, right? Like we don't like, it's not fun rolling up to place and we're like, man, this is going to be like really tough. Um, so that's really a differentiating factor for them. And then the tree houses, like I said, just the overall environment of their property and their units, it's very magical. Like you feel like you're in a fantasy book. Um, and it, it makes it really easy to showcase because it just looks so cool. You don't see that a lot. Um, so I think that's that's really the, the differentiating factor of like places that go viral really easy versus ones that we have to kind of grind a little bit more for is they have just that that viral factor of, you know, that wow factor that like I had like uh, I said, said it to somebody the other day. Um, it's kind of like a, the bucket list effect, right? You see that and you're like, that's on my bucket list. And when you have that kind of uh, brand and you have that kind of feeling for people who see your audience, like it evokes that feeling of like, that needs to be on my bucket list. I have to go there. Um, it makes our job really easy because they're willing to, to do whatever they need to do to get there. So it's really just trying to get that in front of as many people as possible, that uniqueness. And then it kind of sells itself. Yeah. And, and so, you know, we've covered your, your best practices and, and, and tips and tricks on, on how to sort of grow these businesses and um, get virality for these glamping businesses and outdoor hospitality businesses. Uh, one aspect that can supercharge growth uh, for, for social media channels uh, is using influencers. Uh, now, again, that some people listening to this might be more familiar um with that concept than others so i guess we, it's probably best to just give an introduction into the concept of an influencer which is a you know someone who has got, gathered a, a following on social media for for whatever reason it may be they could be you know an interesting they could live an interesting life traveling in a van or, or whatever it may be uh, and so you know you either pay at these people or give them free stays or whatever um to stay at your site with the idea of them posting about it on social media um and 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 you know their followers becoming a fan of of, of your business essentially and, and coming and paying to stay at your business. Uh, so have you seen much success by using influencers? Uh, and and if you have, what are the kind of best practices to make sure that you're using them properly? Yeah, yeah. So you know, along with our organic strategies, um, obviously organic is not the most like surefire way to grow or to like net an ROI. Um, it's it's like casting a net and, and strategizing the best way to cast that net and where to place that net and when to pull it up. But it's like not a super sure fire, fire way like, uh, you know, paid advertising is. Um, so to, to kind of cushion that, you know, um, that concept for our clients, because it's like when, um, you know, when people approach us, they often approach us as like a marketing company, like, oh, you're gonna get us results. And it's like, no, we're gonna grow your brand and we're gonna do whatever it takes to stay relevant on social. Um, but there's no surefire thing. Like I can't tell you we're gonna get you a million followers tomorrow. That's not a thing. Um, but adjacent strategies like, influencers, giveaways, that kind of thing. That's stuff that we, we utilize all the time. Um, I'm a big, big, big supporter of influencers. Um, being one myself when I first got into this stuff, you know, being an influencer is one really hard, but it's really, really, it pays off for both sides if you can do it right. So for us, when we're looking to try to source influencers for our partners or our clients that we're working with or we're consulting about it, you know, I always like to ask a couple questions. Um, some of those would be like, you know, what's your brand and who would fit into that that would make sense for them to come and stay at your place? So like if you have um, a super like very chill, you know, very meditative stay where it's like very zen, you probably shouldn't have, you know, some athletic model who runs around in a bikini and like shotguns beers come, come to your stay and like promote it because it's probably not going to be the best fit. It would get um, me to come and stay. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Or if you have that kind of vibe and brand, then it's like, okay, that works. Like, let's let's have all of them out and let's do that. Let's throw a party. Um, so it's, it's really like figuring out what your brand is, who fits into that, right? Like, you want to have a good fit. Um, and then second, like, what are you looking to get from them? Um, influencers, you know, have a bad kind of rep and like, oh, they're – they're just like snobby people who think they're owed something. Well, in reality, if somebody does have 50, 100, 200,000 followers, they do have a, a bunch of leverage. They have those people looking at them as an individual saying, I want to follow them and I'll listen to them. So they do have a lot of value. And I think it's something that people need to get over. Like influencers are good. Like it's not bad to be an influencer. It's not bad to utilize influencers, but you should know the intention of having them out. Um, you know, they, there's a number of values that an influencer can bring. Um, 
they can bring just straight up their their audience and their audience's eyes. If they have 200,000 followers, they post about you, you could possibly get seen by all of those people, if not more. Um, some a lot of influencers at this at this point double as media. Ex, uh, sorry, a lot of influencers at this point double as media specialists. So a lot of influencers I'm personally friends with and I know they're really good media people. So they can shoot video, drone, photo, all those things. So it's like, do you want media? Because some of these people can produce media for you. Um, and then the last thing would be social proofing. So uh, like we kind of talk about a little bit um, or. We talk about all the time with our clients, you know, um, is brand awareness and getting people to trust you. You know, that's what we're why we're doing social media in the first place is to build that brand awareness while having an influencer who's trusted by 500,000, you know, YouTube followers. That's going to bring brand awareness that people are like, oh, I I wasn't sure about spending two thousand dollars for a vacation with them. But because, you know, a Levi Kelly said that I should, I'm going to go and do that. And that's that's what we call social proofing. It's 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 putting um, somebody that they that uh, an audience can trust in front of them, saying, "Hey, you should definitely do this." Like confirmed, green light, go do it. You can trust me. So like those are just a few factors that we look for, and those are some value points of influencers that is like super super beneficial. So we love using influencers, but again, it's intentionality, figuring out what value you want from them, and then honestly, the last part of that, just treat them right, man. Like like I said, a lot of people have weird tastes mouth about influencers and you know a lot of people treat influencers very weird um but it's like just treat them right like they're hardworking. they're trying to probably trying to make a living off of it so if you treat them right like if they grow you'll grow too and you can build those relationships just like anything else and i'm sure you've learned a lot a lot of lessons on the way in using influencers and how to pick the best ones for, for each project and everything like that and in terms of general learnings since you started, you know, a few years ago, uh, doing this this content production and social media uh, agency work for short term rentals and unique hospitality stays, um, what's one thing that that you've really um, learned from and improved on that you're doing a lot better now than you were doing when you first started? Yeah. Do you mean like a, in terms of like business, like you know, self awareness, or like with with clients and like with strategy? Or- with with clients. So so you know, something that you you implement now that that gets better results than maybe when than what you were doing uh, two, three years ago, for example. Yeah, I think it's just being more, and you know, and we just had a team meeting about this. You know, we had all the whole team in-house. Um, but I think it's just getting more analytical with the way that we think. So like one of our company's core values at Consa House is uh, being full brain problem solvers. So as creatives, we naturally want to be like creatively brained and like think about things like very artistically. Um, but there is probably 70% of the battle with social isn't just looking good. It's doing good practice and strategy. So I think really like hammering into our culture as a company, um, as a team that executes to be a full brain problem solver, to think about things analytically, as well as think of them like aesthetically. Like it needs to look good, but it also needs to make sense. Like why are we doing every single thing that we're doing and how does it like help to optimize that content? So I I really think in the beginning, you know, and I could just show so many examples of just like either bad work or like really beautiful, cool work that like just doesn't do well. You know, in the beginning, like I had a couple videos that I put out that are shot horizontally. So it's like thinking as a media person, but also thinking as like a, a content creator for these platforms, I think is the biggest mindset shift that we've had. Um, you know, and it's a battle every day. We, we, you know, right now we have for um, media specialists that are either in team in in house with our team uh, working full time or that we you know partner with and we use as freelance contractors and that's the hardest thing is you know training that those people to be um, you know full brain problem solvers to think through not just the creative work but analytically think through is this going to work on the platform and why is it going to work and and really start thinking like that so I think that's the biggest mindset shift to be honest and it's something that we're constantly um, pushing to our team and and trying to you know solidify as like a cultural aspect like we need to think from both sides of these this spectrum yeah and, and you know it's your job to, to be good at social media let, 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 let's be honest you know that so obviously you've got you, you know it's very important that, that you that you do that thinking and, and analyzing and everything like that the people that you know are maybe trying to do this themselves 
I think that's really important to, to emphasize is just you can't just mindlessly post random social media content out that you've really got to think about it like an agency like you um, like you would like it's your full-time job even you know if, even if they may not be able to devote full-time hours to it uh, I think that's one thing that I'd really get across from today's episode is you've got to really you know think test analyze etc uh, if you really want to sort of um, get that kind of growth or you can just pay Nate to do it for you whatever works best sure. um, yeah. so I, this wasn't on the running order so sorry if this sort of catches you out and surprises you um but i would like if you have like one particular piece of advice or one particular strategy or tip that you would give to someone looking to um, grow their glamping businesses social media following what would that be yeah i think it would be um so this actually isn't isn't my tip but it's from a really great influencer uh i believe his name is brock johnson on instagram um but he had this saying when he was, you know, really climbing the ladder of social media influencer that always caught my attention. But he said, see students still graduate. Um, and that kind of changed the course of the way that I did media, because what he means by that is like, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to put out a plus S tier content. You can put out C level content and that's OK. And that's what people want to see. So I think that's my biggest piece of advice is a C student can still graduate. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be a media specialist. You don't have to be a social media specialist to, to, to grow on social media. Um, you can do it. Like I said, you have to be intentional and you have to be consistent. But if you're willing to be those two things, you can put out decent content and it will do good. And that's where we see a lot of our clients, and especially on the consultancy end of things, because I do consult with a lot of people you know, who might not be able to afford our who might not be able to afford our full service, um, you know, I'll, I'll do some consultancy hours. And that's the first thing that I always run into and I run into with clients too at day to day is, you know, hey, this isn't perfect. It's not supposed to be. You know, you're, you're talking about a platform that has, you know, literally a billion people on it and all those people have flaws and all these things. And like, it's one of those things where it's a marketing, a weird marketing mindset too. You know, usually in marketing, you know, you're thinking, oh, this press release, this you know, newspaper article, this ad on TV, it needs to be pristine. You can't have typos, anything. That's not the case anymore. Um, you know, I hate to burst any old school marketing people's bubbles, but you can get on there and you can, if you want to, you can cuss, you can talk about your divorce, you can talk about your dog dying, and then you can spell, you know, everything wrong and people are still going to love you and they're going to, they're going to love your content if they connect with you. So I think that that concept, C students can still graduate, you know, take the, take that weird imperfection, you know, insecurity away, just start posting and start being consistent be be analytical and intentional with it and you'll grow and like that's the biggest piece of con uh that's the biggest piece of advice that i could probably give um to somebody trying to do this you know in-house themselves yeah and, and that creates that authenticity you know no one wants uh, yeah if you, i mean I'm, there is definitely a market for flawless spotless social yeah. media content for you know the two thousand dollar a night stays but yeah. but even even within that that range it doesn't mean you can't build a brand within that you can't build a, a personality and, and it doesn't have to be some soulless corporate video yeah. uh, that authenticity i think is is a, is, is a major sort of community builder as well right yeah 100 percent absolutely well amazing thank you nate um if anyone wants to get in touch uh, and work with you how do they go about doing that yeah so if, if any, anybody is needing help with any of this stuff or you know you even want to like have some consultancy um you can reach me through um just my email nate at the contenthouse.io you can find us find me on social uh nate Veets or our um our business uh, i believe it's the contenthouse.io on instagram um, yeah, you can find us through any of those avenues and, you know, our biggest, my biggest goal with this, you know, company is to help as many people as possible, you know, have that creative, uh, asset and, and creative leverage in their business. So we're always looking to, to, you know, partner with new people, um, or to consult because we think that this stuff's really important for, you know, your business or your personal brand. So, um, if you need any help, like, please reach out and you can reach out through those channels. And, and that information will be in the description. So thank you, Nate. It's been an absolute pleasure and, and we really appreciate you giving up your time for this. Yeah, thanks so much, Nate.